Evening all and welcome once again to a warm and sunny Sheffield and of course this, the Fight Zone Arena. It's been our home from the start of this great adventure and it is our home for one final dance. Sadly, the car park will be no more as the Fight Zone Arena after tonight, but it's been a cracking ride thus far. Each and every Friday we've been here to bring you brilliant boxing bouts, some really competitive action and surely in and amongst all of that, a contender for the fight of the year. If you've been with us from the start, welcome along once again for one final time here in Sheffield for now. But if you're new to Fight Zone, here's a taster of what you've been missing the last few weeks. What a brilliant six weeks we've had at this purpose-built Fight Zone Arena today. Then the last of our shows here before we head out on the road, both domestic and international shows coming over the weeks uh, of July. And we've got a cracking card in store as well to say goodbye for now to Sheffield. But we say hello to our old mucker, Glenn McCrory, who's alongside me working on his tan in the Sheffield sunshine. Amazing, isn't it? I know. We'll be freezing by nine o'clock. Don't worry about that. Uh, the one, one week freezing last week. Hoodies, yeah. hoodies on last week and now we're sweating. I know. But uh, do you know what? I feel almost nostalgic about uh, saying goodbye to the car park. So do I. It's it's not going to be the same. Friday Friday evenings will never be the same standing in a, in a car park. But it really has been. It's been fantastic, hasn't yeah. it? It's been a great launch to Fight Zone. It's, it's pulled off perfectly well. Um, the fights have been excellent. So, um, yeah, really, you know, now get out on the road definitely we were certainly going to do that but actually in the in the weeks that we've already had with between title fights and getting to know some debutants some real prospects i think from sheffield and beyond a lot of lancastrians we've featured uh, but fighters from all over the country have come and started to make a name for themselves and you know what the vibe i get from the fighters is how much they enjoy it yes you know how much you know that they they finally got got uh, a program they they can be on you know they yeah. can get seen and that that's that's so important, you know, and, and you can tell you know, everybody spoke so highly of it, loved being on the show, loved everything about it. So it's great. No, it really is. It really is. I think, obviously, the standout one that jumps straight to the forefront of your mind is the, is the McCubbin Windle fight. It was just, it was nip and tuck all the way, wasn't it? I think Windle was a deserved winner, but they didn't half take it out on each other. It was a great scrap. It was right, right from the very beginning, all the way through. They, they you know, went at it and. Um, Put on a great fight for us, and it was great to have. It was great to have Wendell yeah. Wayne up here last week telling us about. You know, th that's a good thing. We get to we get to find out the characters Definitely. behind. You know, so often you just see you see the fighters in the ring, and that's it. We're getting interviews and yeah. finding out about them and finding out what their stories are. It's fascinating. It was great to meet Matt Wendell, the uh, the the punching poet. Uh, now we'll see plenty more of him, but here's what we've got for you tonight on our last night for now here in Sheffield. First up, John Patrick Harker, who was upset on his debut against the fired up Brett Fighter. That was a tough start, but he's up against Luke Fash from Hull. Uh, a second attempt for John Patrick Harker, who uh, of course fights out of York, trained by none other than Henry Wharton. Reese Edwards doesn't need much introduction. A fight zone debut for the unbeaten Welsh. We'll get look to go. 11 uh, fights unbeaten. He takes on the very durable and skillful, I should say, Jamie Quinn from Stockport. And then Dan Catlin returns after an eye-catching stoppage back in May. But it's a step up for him tonight at Cruiserweight against Luke Blackledge. Definitely the Fleetwood man. If he's uh, anything like his best, will be 
uh, a difficult opponent, you would think, for Dan Catlin. Those are the three undercard fights, all three, of course, between now and 7.30. And then later, we've got all sorts of goodies for you. Zach Miller, Josh Holmes and Ian Martell all claimed wins in the Fight Zone Arena back in May, and they're all back hoping for more success tonight. Holmes, of course, got the stoppage inside two rounds last time out. He's looking to catch the eye again against Christian Narvaez. Zach Miller gave a lot of weight away in his last win, and he does so again here against the durable opponent, Naeem Ali, coming in at over a stone heavier. There's an exhibition contest to look forward to as well. After Hannah Bagley's original opponent had to withdraw late on, she'll get a taste of elite level boxing with three rounds against one of Britain's brightest in Hannah Rankin. That one definitely to catch the eye a little later. Ian Martel scores a KO last time out with a devastating body shot to stop Elvis Stube in his tracks. And he takes on another heavy-handed fighter in Eric Nazarian tonight. That should be an explosive contest at heavyweight, as you can see on your screen. And then top of the bill, headlining tonight, a hero's welcome for Jack Massey, one of the country's top cruiserweights who has joined Fight Zone, kicks off his journey looking to secure the IBF European belt against Frenchman Engin Karakaplan. So all of that to look forward to, and the thoughts of Ant Crawler, who's made it over the peaks to join myself and Glenn. Nicely decked out as usual, got your summer threads Shall on. Mate, we have, mate, needed another glorious night here at I the know. Fight Zone Arena. I know. The last one, me and Glenn just mate, been getting nostalgic Emotional, it. emotional. It's, uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't know what's been said, but it's uh, this has been turning into a special little place. Yeah. I mean, I was joking about it with Don McGuinness the other day. It's. Uh, it's a mix between the beer garden and Caesar's Palace car park. <laughs> um, but now there's some, we've saw some great fights and um, I'm sure it won't be the last we see the fights on arena. It might be my favourite car park, Glenn. It, it just might be. <laughs> it certainly is. You know, I, I mean, know they've done it. They've done it up so well. I mean, yeah. the planning that's gone into this and you know how much, how much you know they, they've had to arrange it. It's, it's brilliant. And it, it's been great to be here. It really does give you a sense of occasion. You know, and I think the, the fans have been, have been great lapping it up. So, um, no, we'll miss it. We will. Some names that will be coming, be becoming a little bit more familiar back on show again tonight. Josh yes. Holmes, Dan Catlin, Zach Miller, uh, and Ian Martell. Reese Edwards, obviously one that has really already made a name for himself, but it's his first go to, to impress the Fight Zone viewers. Yes, no, it's another great lineup. I know some of the lads personally, I just saw Zach Miller in the back there. Obviously, a local lad, um, very good coach, my mate Steve Maylett. Josh Holmes, super talented, mm. and, um, Jack Massey, obviously, we know well, but the lads of the lads you mentioned, I think you just mentioned there, Martel. Yeah. It was impressive last time out. Dan Catlin, I'm looking forward to seeing the action. No, I think it's um, a great lineup, and obviously, Jack Massey, main event. Um, he was sparring a lot with Jose Burton mm. in the gym in Bolton, and he's looking really well. Yeah. And actually, first up, John Patrick Harker, trained by Henry Wharton. We've great talked a lot. to see him back out. Yeah. 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 We've talked a lot, haven't we, about the fact that there's too much emphasis placed on the zero in professional boxing. Mm. He lost his debut fight, so obviously, we wish him well tonight but it perhaps it reinforces the idea that boxers are on their own journey and, and they're learning exactly. even in defeat exactly and you know there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with with a result like that you know what i mean it just puts you brings you down yeah. down the level yeah. you know, keeps your feet on the floor he's got a lot you know he's a very good amateur and you know there's a lot it's a long road you know as as Ant knows it's a long road you know a few twists and turns yeah. along that way so it's just a case of you know so much about boxing is is just sticking at it sticking at it learning and picking things up and yeah and you know sooner or later you'll be there yeah you get there yeah if you've got the right stuff then obviously it will it, eventually you will shine and in fairness to him yes perhaps brett fido was what yep, was, was a very tough, a tough opening tough debut, fight yeah. um, opponent whether it's late notice or not and we've seen what brett fido has gone on to yeah. do just last week yeah. in beating the very talented tyrone mcculloch um that's that's a great win for him a great win for him and brett fido said at the time i think if someone took a bit of a chance on Brett, he could do mm. something. So, mm. listen, there's, don't look too much into a narrow points decision to him in your pro debut. No, indeed, indeed. Well, I think uh, the first fighters are ready, including John Patrick Harker. So we'll see how he gets on this time on the back of that uh, debut defeat. And your MC to bring the fighters out in Sheffield is Mr. Paul Booth. Well, boxing fans are excited here at the fabulous Fight Zone Arena at Sheffield. A very good evening and a very warm welcome to this evening's Bill of Boxing, brought to you by Dennis Hobson's Fight Academy. Bound number one is a super featherweight contest. 
And the first boxer to make his way to the ring is Luke Fash. On his way now into the Fight Zone Arena, making his way to the blue corner from York, John Patrick Huck. joining us right around the world on Fight Zone TV's platform. Dennis Hobson's Fight Academy now bring you bout number one of our card. This is a super featherweight contest and we are scheduled for four rounds of boxing. Timekeeper ringside is Chris Hancock of Doncaster. Upon the sound of that bell, the third man in the ring is our scoring referee introducing Andy Brook of Leeds. Boxing out of the red corner. He's wearing the black and white shorts this evening. On the scales officially, at eight stone, 12 pounds, 14 ounces. He has two career victories to his credit. He boxes out of Hull. Introducing Flash Luke Fan. And across the ring, boxing out of the blue corner. He's wearing black trim with gold, officially scaling at nine stone, three pounds, two ounces. One fight as a professional, resulting in defeat. He boxes out of York, introducing John Patrick Harker. <laughs> Referee Andy Brook will now issue his final instructions. Seconds out, round one. So here are the first contest of the evening at the Fight Zone Arena. Here, Fight Zone, your new home of UK boxing. And we have John Patrick Harker from York in just his second contest against the very experienced Luke Fash, who is entering the professional ring for the 65th time tonight. And the black shorts with gold trim of Harker, who well, he has a point to prove. The first fight of his professional career, the debut, did not go his way, didn't go according to plan. He got in there with Brett Fido, who's done it to many, did it last weekend to Tyrone McCulloch. He shocked Harker and his team, really put it on him. It was a, a very, very tricky debut for Harker, who quickly, that was just a couple of weeks ago, has the chance to turn it around. And alongside me for the first three fights here on fight zone before the subscription comes into play as Harker goes to work is heavyweight returnee Dave Allen a couple of fights in the diary I think Dave as well they have got a few in the diary got one coming up next Thursday then we've got three three lined up for the end of the year but it's nice to see John Patrick Harker back in action great from his manager Kev, Kevin Murray I think his manager is un unbelievable to get, it, to get him out again soon soon after his debut like that you know obviously Probably, probably feeling a bit down, but the Fido defeat, you know, after Fido beat McCullough, it just shows the level that, is, that Fido can operate at, so it's nice to see him back out again. Losing to Fido, there's no shame in that, you know, he can rebuild and start again, but you lose to Little Pass, it's game over, so he needs to win tonight. 
Yeah, a bit of pressure on his shoulders and Fash is a very good operator as well. Of course, he is one of these excellent road warriors. Yeah, Fash can fight. He's not been stopped for over five years now. You know, and the people that have stopped him, Jeff Ford, he's we've seen how good he is. Andrew Kane, I've seen, is a very good fighter. So, you know, Fash can do it. The first round, he will see he's clever. He's, uh, he, he's by far the naturally smaller man, and he's losing the first round, but you can see that he can definitely look after himself. Good work to head and body there from Parker. As Seth Brown, as you say, so important for him to get that defeat and the disappointment of that when he's you know, done a few tickets and all the pressure from your debut, but he's exactly where the scene of the crime, if you like. He's back at the Fight Zone Arena. Beautiful weather tonight as well, nice and warm. And the evening building nicely as we have this very unique atmosphere, but for the final time, the Fight Zone Arena will be no more after tonight. Yeah, I'm very sad about that, Dom, to be honest. It's uh, one, of the, one of those interesting backdrops I've seen for a, for a boxing uh, venue. It's lovely, and uh, nearly as lovely as John Patrick half his opening round here. You know, he's won this round. I'm sure he'll have gone out a lot more confident than he had when he started the fight after his debut a few weeks ago. Good to go some nice punches. Fast is making a miss, Fast is a, fast is a good old pro. He's, uh, he's very good at what he does, and that's a good round for Harker. Well, I'm sure that settled him down after that tough start to his pro career. It was a decent amateur as well. Harker, we can just hear a little bit in the corner there, because Henry Wharton, of course, a legend in that part of the world and, of course, beyond a three-time world title challenger. Got in there with the very best, didn't he, Wharton? So he's got a good man in the corner and, as you say, Kev Marie, the manager. But he settled down well in that round, Harker. Yeah, I thought he boxed really well. I thought he boxed well against Fido. You know, the Fido fight was close. I think I personally had a draw on the night. He boxed well against Fido, you know, and Fido, like I said, the, the McCullough result just shows what kind of level Fido can operate at. So Harker, for me, you know, tonight, tonight's the... Tonight's the, the fresh start for him. He impressed me there, he boxed really well. But Fash, as I said, 64 fights. Gotta, you got to know your way around there, and you've got to be tough. You've got to survive 64 fights in this whole fight time. So, good start for both men, really. You know, they both got jobs to do tonight, and they both started off really well. Of course, if you haven't already subscribed to Fight Zone, get the app and go via the website. For 4 99 you get live boxing every week. We've had some cracking bills. Looking forward to plenty more coming up over the summer as well. The remainder of this month, shows in Malta, in Scotland. We've gone on the road to London, Cardiff, Liverpool. Hard oh, puts his shots together nice, you know, he's quite fluid. Puts them together really nice, three or four at a time, head and body. The only time I worry about Hard is when the punches come back at him. He, just, he seems to stand up a little bit tall. And he backs up in a straight line. And uh, if Fast put a little bit, a few more punches together at the same time, I'd have a problem. Harker can deal with one and the two, but three and four, he does look uncomfortable. But as long as he keeps, as long as he keeps busy like he's doing now, using his natural size and his, and, and his reach advantages, it's an, it's an easy night's work for him. But he does, he does need to work on going back in a straight line, still up tall. It does look quite a shot of Harker though, but doing four rounds only a matter of I'm not, my maths is quite good. Four weeks ago, you know, four weeks ago, it does look a lot sharper tonight. You know, 18 months out is long time to be out of the ring. The last time his fight was 18 months ago, so he does look much, much uh, sharper tonight. Whether that's because Fash is not throwing any punches or not, I'm not quite sure, but it does look quite good. As you say, so much pressure on him really to right those wrongs from the first fight. Not that he did much wrong, he's just, as you say, Fido was. He'll have been terrified tonight. Form. He'll have been terrified. You, know, you lose your first two uh, fights. Where, where do you go from there? You know, I don't want to say career over because he's a young man, he's got a lot of talent, but there's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure rising on tonight. And it's about getting the job done, you know, and he's, he's doing it, he's doing it in a good fashion. But I like Fast. Fast is a, this is the first time I've seen uh, Luke Fast, and uh, he's a very, very good. Good, uh, good fighter, anyway, Colin. He's good at what he does. I like him a lot. It's Jamie Quinn, obviously. Well, you are his biggest fan, Jamie Quinn. You'll be seeing him a bit later on. Don't worry, he's back. He's only I run the fan club. Don't let me in it, but I run it. <laughs> he's only had one week off away from Fight Zone, the arena here, but he is back tonight. Of course, plenty of action to come, but at the moment, that's Fash. I'm liking a bit of success he's to the body. He's trained, hasn't he trained? And I think 
You know when uh, you know when these these journeyman types, the fighter kid, that's three four and they don't want to be him because might not get any more work. You look at Harker over one, and you think, you know what, I'll beat him. And the, and the kids that met, ring the phones go, you were no good anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll watch, you can still beat me. So these fights, for the, for the kids that are over one, that have that unfortunate first experience in the boxing ring, they, these can be cut lights and fast, just seems to be fancying it. Harker, for me, he's got good boxing ability, he's fluid with his punches, he's everything nicely. I think he made like a bit of physical strength, I think Luke Fast is feeling that, and he starts to have a little bit of a go. He's eyeballing him, Dom. As you say, he's... A fair bit of ambition about him tonight. Boxed recently. Yeah. Adam Mohammed's a good fighter, very good fighter with uh, Frank Warren. Very, very good fighter. He's a yeah. good fighter from Leeds. Yeah. Matt Craddock, my mate from Birmingham. He's been there with some good fighters. You know, the kids that are sort of very, 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 very good fighters. Um, he can fight fast. And I think these like, two rounds up hard. Well, these last two rounds will be interesting. Fast, uh, fast started to fancy a little bit there. And I think, I think he's thinking, you know what? I'm, 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 I've done these four rounds. Six well, 60 times, you know, and he's, he's, he's definitely a very physically strong man. So, the third round will be very, very interesting. We'll see which direction the fight is going to take from here. Well, JP Harker, decent amateur, won a few Yorkshire titles, and box for Harrogate ABC, where he is from originally before moving to York to be trained by Henry Wharton. I like what Fash is doing here, he's rolling, he's rolling and slipping these punches now and he's coming back with something. I think I really think this third round is going to be a lot more interesting than uh, we probably envisaged 30 seconds into round one. Hear the instructions to sink him in, JP. From the Harker corner. All we worry if I was Harker, I'm worrying about trying to work this man. I don't think Harker's the biggest puncher. Don't don't be trying to work him. Just hit him, hit him, hit him and move. Jab, move. You know, get your shots off and get out of there. You don't be standing up there with Fast. It's giving him a bit of confidence when he stands over him. Because Fast probably is the stronger man. It's giving Fast some confidence. If I'm Harker, hit him. Be like a little like a little wasp. In and out, in and out. Sting him. In and out, in and out. Get pick the points up. He's got caught with a few punches this round. Fast, fast is really, uh, you know, Hark's on the front foot and he looks the busier, but if, we, if we're talking punches landed, there's not much in it. Harkin needs to get back to his boxing now. Try and get Fast in the back foot. He's got Fast in the back foot, this is easy. Because he's got the natural advantages with size and, and his reach advantage. He's got, to be, he's got to be pushing Fast back. The job's half done. When Fast comes forward, let's Fast roll forward and use his strength and, and, swing, and swing the shots in, making him look, he looks busier. Certainly Harker on the front foot and trying to dominate centre of the ring as Fast then moves forward himself as well. What Fast is doing, I think because he's had, six, he's had 64 fights and only, and only one two of them, he's not really got the most ambition, he's not really, he, he's very good at slipping punches, making fighters miss, but he's not really used to making them, making it pay after, he's not used to, to making them pay, making a miss and throwing the punch off, off the slip or off the duck or off the roll, he's happy to make a miss. When he does throw off the, off the slip or the roll or the duck, he, he, he's dangerous. And he's definitely walking Harker now. I think Harker starts to feel the pace a bit. Harker's winning the third round, but uh, Fast is making it interesting. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see Fast you know, do this. Well, you shot. mentioned just the two victories on his CV, and they were early on. By that. They were early on. By that, yeah. Yeah, Dwayne Winters back in April 2016, James. Thierry Cato back in March of the same year, so it's been a while. I'm surprised he's definitely got ability. He's definitely not. I think this fight has been made at Super Bantam Feather, but you know you can see he's probably not a Super Bantam or a Feather, is he? Yeah, this one at Super Feather tonight. Definitely not a Super Feather then. Neither man operating really at their true weight this evening for this four rounder. He's a good fight for Harker because Fash is making him miss, you know, he's coming back with the odd shot, making him think, but he's not doing enough to win the round. So that's another Harker round for me, three rounds up and he's three minutes away from his first professional victory. Well, Harker catching that right hand from Fash there, but after dominating really with the jab in the early stages of that round. 
Yeah, Hawk has got he's got good moves, he's got good boxing ability, he's quite slick, he's busy, he's, he, he looks big at the weight, whether that's fast being small, I'm not quite sure, can't work it out from here, but I think he probably I think I'm not sure how old he is, but he looks to lack a bit of physical strength and power and hopefully that'll come with, with age and, and time. Plenty of time to develop the man's strength, obviously. I like half as a boxer. I think, I think he's got good skills. I think he's, I think he watched a lot of the uh, the Mexicans. I'm not surprised he watched a lot of Juan uh, Marquez and Chavez. You can see that he, he leads a lot with the, with the left uppercut. I think he can watch a lot of the old Mexicans. Uh, not the old ones, the, the night but for me they're old. I'm telling the young man. But you know the Barreras, the Morales, the, the Marquez, the Chavez seniors. He, lead, he leads the left uppercut. But uh, like, like you say, at 21 years of age, I think he's just lacking a bit of that strength at the moment. You know and. The likes of Luke Fast, Brett Fido, you know, what, what Fast might, might lack in, uh, in size here and maybe Harker's skill and amateur pedigree, he makes up for that, for that brute strength of being a man. He puts together some lovely shots. He puts together some lovely combinations. There doesn't seem to be much behind him, that's the only problem, but as I've said 17 times already, hopefully that comes with time. But I'm sure you just want to get that arm raised at the end, that'll be the main thing, of course, just get the W in the column and crack on. I'm going through this. I like Luke Fast. I think Luke Fast is a good opponent for lots of fighters. Have I, have I got any super feathers? Have I got any super feathers? Not sure I'd have. But if I have, I would love him to box a man like this. You're going to learn a lot from it. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Luke Fast. He goes in my top 10 journeyman list. And I, and I, and I love a journeyman, as you know, and he's, uh, he's right there with the best of them. You've got an ever growing stable, haven't you? So just get out there and find a super Well, I wish I managed all the Luke Fast and Jamie Queens. I'd be a millionaire to box every week. <laughs> Edging towards the final stages of this four rounder. The crowd getting behind Harker's every. The only thing I don't like about Harker blow. is he leaves with a right hand, and it's not even a good right hand, it's just a bit of a flick. And when you find a good man, a bit sharper, a bit a bit fresher, a bit hungrier, he's going to come over the top of that lead right hand and put it like that. And, I, and when you box this kind of level of opposition, you can get away with it, but you don't get away with that when you step up. He's just on it there again, Dom. Did you see it? Come over the top of that with a left up, sit over the top of the left up. He's got to stop leading with that right hand. It's not even a proper right hand. But apart from that, Dom, been impressive, and I'm really glad to see him get his win. And uh, great night for him. Good, good work from both men. Well, he has landed a couple of right hands in this fourth round. Certainly, Harker. He's leading with it, but it's just a bit of a slap. And there it is. He hears the final bell, and I think it's going to be. A better night at the office for John Patrick Harker tonight after the debut against Brett Fido did not go his way. What That was a, a close fight, but Dave Allen, score that for us before the referee does the honours, Andy Brook. I think 40-36, I don't think that does justice to Luke Fast's effort tonight. Put a lot of effort in, he tried, he's, he's a good fighter, Luke Fast, he's good, he's very good at what he does. Uh, for Harker, I think with age and maturity, we've got a good fighter here, he's a good fighter, he's got good skills, uh, he's long and rangy. I just think he lacks that physical strength and power, but at 21 years of age, you know, I think that'll come and uh, I think he's got a good future. Well, of course, Jack Massey tops the bill tonight on Fight Zone. After Harker, well, just did the better work in that fourth round, landed the cleaner work. But yes, the return of Jack Massey on Fight Zone tonight against Engen Karakaplan, Ian Martell in action, Hannah Bagley against Hannah Rankin, that's an intriguing one as well. But of course, we now have the well, the official scorecard of the scoring referee, Andy Brook, and it's with our MC for tonight, Paul Booth. The Super Featherweight Contest goes the distance after four rounds of boxing. The scoring referee decides the bout.
He has it at 40 points to 36 points in favour of our winner from York, John Patrick Hucker. Well, he'll feel a lot better about himself and his prospects, won't he, now? Uh, after a pretty good workout, again, you'd say, against Luke Fash. Anthony and uh, Glenn watching with me. I'm sure that's a, a relief to the young man. Yeah, of course, he's up and running now. And again, they mentioned then Luke Fash, great opponent for a debut. And um, I thought he'd done well. I thought he'd done well. Like, I think, said again in commentary, it'll take a little bit of time physically to mature. Mm. A bit. Well, he's got nice skills. Got a great man in Henry Wharton there with him. Yeah. It's, um, it's good to see him up and running. Like I said, he's... He's got nice skills, um, Chicago, and it'll just take a little bit of time. Like I say, don't look too much into the debut. He can box, he's got skills. It'll just take a little bit of time physically to mature, but um, he's got a lot of good attributes. Glenn, what did you make of him? I like him. I like him. I like you know, his professionalism. He's, he, sta he stays in the pocket. He doesn't panic. You can tell you know, Henry's had that, you know, taught him that. Um, and that all comes with sparring, just being able to relax, stay inside. Um, good variety. Uh, yeah, 21 years of age. You know, I think he'll he'll learn, he'll learn, and I think he'll do well. Yeah, I guess if he's slightly lacking in power at the moment, then he wants to be a bit of a back foot boxer, he's a bit of a counter puncher, and then he, he wants to get hit a little bit less. I mean, most boxers <laughs> want that, don't they? Yeah, he's a he's a little bit upright. He's a bit upright, but that's you know he's, he's getting caught because he's he's in the he's in the pocket. You know, he's staying right right in front of his opponent. He didn't, you know, he looked he looked better than just a, a two fight a two fight novice. He looked more professional mm. than that. You know, when you go in with somebody like Fash, then, then, you know, he knows his way around the ring. And, and you know, he, he found that out last time when he got, when yeah. he got pipped. You know, Henry Wharton, they thought, they thought he'd just done enough to get that fight, but it, it wasn't so. But straight away, you're learning. You're yeah. learning, you know, and um, as we've, we've said, there's, there's nothing wrong with getting a, a defeat. It was very close, and you've seen how, what he's gone on to do with Tyrone McCulloch. So, um, didn't I like him? What does a taller fighter, who's obviously got there for the advantage of reach and, and so on and height, what do they do to avoid being such a too obvious a target, if you like? I think sometimes I think I'd like to see him move his feet a little bit. I get the thing of trying to plant his feet and, you know, sink his shots in, which I know you have to do in this game. But I think just use your advantages a little bit more, yeah. you know, sort of you don't always have to be a static target after you're through. You know, take that step out, use that reach and then go again. Um, like I said, I think the main thing for Arca is to be using his, you know, using his advantage as well. And uh, I'm sure that'll come up. Like Glenn said, I thought he looks a bit more experienced than mm. somebody who's just had the two fights. And listen, he's one on one. But like I said, he's, he's better than that. Uh, ignore, the, ignore the loss. He'll, um, he'll have some fun times with him, and especially when he matures physically. Yeah, well, one presumes that's the influence of Henry Wharton in his corner, that he's got that kind of already quite a seasoned look about his punch variety and his skills. Yeah. He just needs to, he needs to slip punches yeah. a little bit. You yeah. know, you, you're standing nice and upright, but, you know, you just need that little movement. You've just got to get into that routine of keeping that movement. That also, you know, if you shrug your shoulders a little bit, it keeps you nice and loose and relaxed. Mm. So, um, you know, there's a few things to learn, but he's got a great man in Henry, you know, showing him the way. Yeah, and it's often about matchmaking, isn't it? Just finding the right opponent to give you enough of a step up that it's yeah. worthwhile, but not that it drives that, you backwards that's a great fight and um i think you know opponents like that um luke thought he was, he was very good tonight asked questions he didn't just took up yeah. to survive he asked questions a good handful of them working me on like i said i think you can take your time with harker i've said it you know a few times now i think physically the, the shots are all there just physically it'll just take him a little mm. bit of time and a lot of people like that i know i was a late developer mm. i'm sure he's going to be one himself but um there's a lot to like about him let's hear from the man himself jp harker just waiting to talk to dom mcginnis well, JP, congratulations. I mean, the smile on your face before as you were walking over here, is that relief? Is it, uh, just kind of talk through it, because we know what happened on your debut. It was yeah. a really tough debut. So how does it feel tonight? Just over the moon to get over and done with, get the win, the first win. I was unlucky to not get it last time, but I got it tonight, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, but having a debut against Brett Fido, and you've seen what happened last week with yeah, Brett yeah. Fido as yeah. well with McCulloch. So again, that was a really tough one. But it was. 
It's great that you've got out so quickly because mm. the last thing any fighter needs is to dwell on that. After yeah. you've made your debut, it's not gone your way. Kevin Marie, your manager, has done, done great to get you back here, out here on Fight yeah, Zone. Sorry, the scene of the crime as well. Yeah. So it adds something special to yeah, it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. So as soon as I come out of the ring last time, he said to me straight away, he said, I'm back out on the 2nd of July. Literally within two or three minutes, he told me that I was back out. Uh, so obviously, I've got to say thanks to him and hopefully I get out soon again. And you're in there again tonight with another tough operator mm. in, in Luke Fash. He's tricky, he's very yeah, experienced, yeah. he knows what he's doing in there. How did you find it? I found it all right, I found it all right. He wasn't really going anywhere when I was hitting him, but I was just trying to get my jab out and just trying to get the first win. That's really what I was wanting tonight. I we didn't really care about the performance, I just wanted the win. And that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about that now. So now you've got that out of the way, you've got the, the, the debut out of the way. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to do now? I mean, this fight zone arena, unfortunately, is no more. You can't come back here now, nah. it's the final night. It is. I'm going to get straight back out to Kev as soon as I get back out here and see what the plan is. Have a chat with them and see where we're going from here. Well, well done tonight. Thank you very All much. All the best. Thank you. Fight Zone is certainly going places. Here's some of our stop-offs in the calendar in the weeks and months to come. We've got a fight show from Riga in Latvia later in the month and we'll be in Malta before July is done and indeed up in Hamilton in Scotland. York Hall, of course, well known to boxing enthusiasts in early August. We're in Bolton then in the middle of next month before we're back in Sheffield, albeit not in the car park. Uh, at the end of the month on the bank holiday weekend at the end of August. So lots and lots to look forward to, including then further on into the year fights and nights in Liverpool, Manchester, Leicester and beyond. So a good chance to catch up with Kevin Marie, of course, manages a lot of the fighters we've seen here on Fight Zone. So he's dropped by for a chat. How are you? I'm hot. It's a lot yes. warmer out there than you think. I was in the corner there and I had to move and get in a bit of shade. It's a lovely yeah. night tonight. Yeah. Really Happy nice. with what you saw from JP? I am. And from a selfish point of view, I'm relieved and yes. happy. I mean, that's haunted me for a few weeks because yeah. he didn't deserve that. He deserved a lot of praise for taking the fight against Brett Fiedel. A lot of people rightly asked me why we took that fight. Um, I've got a lot of faith in JP and I, and I do believe that he's good enough for, for Brett Fiedel, but on the night it didn't go his way and, and I've got to live with that because it's my decision to put him in that fight. He should be getting the credit for taking that fight. He didn't yeah. go his way. Thankfully, we got him back out a few weeks later and he's done what I know he can do tonight. So full credit to him. It might be, in fact, that the, the, the difficulty and, and pain of that night in the long run actually serves him better than just, you know, a, an easy pick him kind of contest. You know what I mean, Glenn? It's good, you know, it's good education. Yeah. Um, you know, he was in with a, a, a good opponent mm. and we know every now and again they rise to the occasion yeah. and they, they get that win. And... Um, and, and you know they're, they're good fighters for that, that managed to do that, and um, so I think it'll do him no harm. It'll do him no harm. You know, it just keeps his feet on the floor. Yeah. It's it's he's come back. He's come back even better this week. He looked very very good. Looked very professional, and um, yeah, no, I think I think he's got a good future. And bigger picture, obviously, we mentioned the shows to come, including your own show in, in Bolton uh, next month. So lots to look forward to. Oh, I mean, it's fantastic. The, these last few weeks have just been a blessing. Uh, obviously, we've benefited greatly from it, from having a lot of lads out. But we see the other side of things, all the other fighters, all the other coaches who've had maybe a year of not mm. earning, not being active. These shows have been a shot in the arm that we need. I mean, I've not done the maths, but you'd have to look at how many fights we've had. So, you know... How many fighters, how many trainers mm. have earned money over the last seven weeks? I think they should be erecting a statue of uh, Dennis Hobson outside the boxing board <laughs> of control because... Uh, well, you've been busy too. You know, I mean, what, how many... You, it's certainly more than 50 fighters you now manage, isn't it? Well, we've got 80. 80, yeah. Fighters, 80 yeah. plus. You know, 80, 80 plus fighters. And, uh, you know, we see on a, you know, on a daily basis these boys during lockdown, you know, they've had to do other things. They've had to get jobs. They've had to sort of earn money because that's what they do. So, you know, this, this has been hard for them to stay sure. motivated, to be going to the gym when they don't know the ends in sight. And this has been just a rocket. Listen, it's obviously been a tough year and a bit for everybody, but obviously those that are in, if you like, the kind of performance businesses like boxing, it's been awfully tough because it's just simply been very limited as to what has been permitted. Um, but those boys that have caught our eye, I think of, for instance, Mark Jeffers, yeah. amongst obviously your big stable, one that has definitely been one that, that, that has started to, to make a big name for himself. Absolutely. I mean, it'd be... Uh, uh, a miss of me not to mention Mark Jeffers because I think he's, he's going to be one of the future stars of the country. Yeah. Uh, not only was he one of the performances of the fight zone, this, this, this kid is going all the way. Um, 
It's a division that I know really well. I've trained and managed a lot of fighters in this division, and, and Mark Jeffers will be a world champion. Yeah. Now that's, I know that you know every manager and, and trainer will say often things like that, but I think it's it's fair in the case of Mark Jeffers, and actually that. That area of British boxing, when we look at Ian Martell, who's on the bill tonight, and obviously Jack Massey topping the bill tonight, we've seen one or two others down the weeks. We saw, obviously... Um, Hammer yeah, Dars last week. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of fighters in that, in and around that, those categories of weight that, that are really catching the eye and promising big things. There is, and you know what? They, they've come back full of enthusiasm. Like you said, Kevin, it's been really, really hard for everybody in the boxing game not to be doing what we what we do. So yeah. these kids come back, they're, 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 you know, they realise that their careers have almost been taken away from them. Yeah. So you know, they, uh, you imagine how much they want it now. You know, if they weren't fully committed before, they are now because, you know, it, it almost got took away from them. Yeah. So it's it's great to be back. Um, we're going to miss this place, though. Definitely. We'll try and make up for it. It'll be nice to take the show on oh, the road definitely. and, and definitely. Get, get to different cities. It'll be great. And in terms of fighters, obviously, who've got a, a real bright future. And again, the last year's been difficult. I'm sure we're going to see Reese Edwards next, 10-0, looking for 11. Again, from, from his amateur career, his early signs of, as a pro, he's talking about world level, and why shouldn't he? Yeah, he's a very classy kid. Um, he's been warming up for quite a while back there. I think he's planning he? a really sort of explosive performance. And I no normally notice that by how quickly they start warming up. And he was warming up, I think, even before us in the first fight. So I expect him to come out tonight and put on a real fast, good performance tonight. Excellent. Look forward to it. Look, nice to uh, to see you. Thanks for dropping by, as always. And we we'll look forward night. to Bolton and obviously yeah. the weeks in between. Six more wins tonight. Someone's got to win. <laughs> Someone's got to win every fight, including obviously now Reese Edwards. And to get uh, him and his opponent out once again back to your MC, Paul Booth. Boxing fans ringside, a very good evening and welcome to the fabulous Fight Zone Arena here in Sheffield. We're in the sunshine for Friday night's boxing. Time now for bout number two of our evening, making his ring walk now from Stockport, the devil child, Jamie Quinn. to make his ring walk, bringing with him a perfect professional fight record, Reese Edwards. We now bring you a six round contest. This bout in the lightweight division. Timekeeper on the bell is Gary Grennan of Burnley. Upon the sound of the bell, our scoring referee in charge of this contest is Darren Sargentson of Manchester. Boxing out of the red corner, wearing red and trim with black this evening. Seven career victories to his credit. Scaling for the bout at night, stunning house four ounces. He boxes out of Stockport, Greater Manchester, introducing the devil child, Jamie Quinn. And across the ring, boxing out of the blue corner. He's wearing the black shorts trimmed with gold. Scaling for the contest at night, stone two pounds, two ounces. His professional fight record is perfect. 10 visits to the ring, 10 victories, four going inside the scheduled distance. Boxing out of Pettigrew, South Wales, introducing the undefeated Reese Edwards. <laughs> Referee Darren Sargent 
Anderson with his final instructions to both boxers. So on to this sixth round contest. Lightweight tonight, of course, Reese Edwards would normally campaign a bit lighter, wearing the black with gold trim, wearing the Welsh flag there as well. He's from Penny Greig in the Valleys, South Wales, against the very familiar sight in the red shorts and black tassels of Jamie Quinn from Stockport that's made the Fight Zone Arena here pretty much his home. He's only missed one weekend, that was last weekend. He's been as ever-present as Dave Allen alongside me. I like watching Jamie Quinn when he boxes the good lads. Reese Edwards, 10-0. Very good amateur. Two British five Welsh, bronze in the new Commonwealth Games, went to World Championship, 75, 60 wins, started boxing nine years old, was Wales' youngest pro. And tonight, <laughs> with your notes telling me that, I know that uh, it'll bring out it'll bring out the best in Jamie Quinn. And tonight we'll see Jamie's real you will see a lot of we'll see a lot of skill out of him. He'll have to be clever, he'll have to he'll have to use all his tricks, he'll uh, have to use a jab. So I like it when Jamie Watts is the, the, the really good fighters, which, which Reese Edwards is, so I think we'll see a good contest here. As you say, he's a real prospect, Edwards, really well rated. He was the youngest as a professional in Wales. He's highly ranked amateur, of course, and plenty of honours. Yeah, you can see he's good. He's good. He's got good reflexes. Puts the shots together nice, he's got fast hands. You can see he's got a little bit about him. He's only been six rounds twice, so uh, with the 18 months out, it'll be interesting how he, how he approaches this. Is he going to try and get Jamie Quinn out of there? Is he going to try and get the rounds in? I'm not sure, we'll see. Yeah, not had a fight since February of last year against Johnny Phillips, went the distance in that six rounder. Jamie Quinn on the jab, love to see it on the jab tonight. Is he nervous over Bantam waiting? He's saying, Reese, get on the jab, give me an easy night, he's putting him on the jab. Jamie, Jamie's going to make it as easy as possible for himself. Take your time, take your time. A good snappy work still from Edwards, who's brought a few with him tonight. All the fighters have done really well with the tickets, and Edwards no different. It's a fair journey from South Wales. Keep touching away, keep touching. He's got fast hands, he's got very fast hands, but with Jamie Quinn, Jamie Quinn's not giving you nothing. Look at him, he's different tonight. We saw him, we seen him weeks gone by with his hands down, you know, doing, doing all the rest of it tonight. He's got his hands up, he's using his jab, and, you know, he's, he's not being as defensive, because when, he, when you're just on the ultra defense, on defensive all the time, that's invites pressure. And you don't want to do that with this man. He's a good fighter, and the fact that he's a bit small, he's a bit nippier, he's, he's fast and sharp. So don't switch you off. Don't switch you off. a different game with Quinn tonight. Well, a good opening round. And our second contest here on Fight Zone. And a very seasoned man in the corner giving the advice to Reese Edwards. Gary, the rocket locket. Well, I remember Gary. I actually remember Gary for watching Kelly Pavlik. Yeah, that was his last fight. Actually. And Kelly Pavlik was an unbelievable fighter, one of the best middleweights of the last, I don't know, what would you say, 20 years. I love to watch him with a, with a, a Golovkin. Was it Pavlik Golovkin? Unbelievable fight. You don't think Pavlik's as good as Golovkin? I didn't say a word. I was looking at the replay you, here you that look, you should you, be looking at. You look very confused there. Pavlik. Even Crawler's not agreeing with me. I can't believe it. Remember the job he did on Jermaine Taylor? Did a great job on Jermaine Taylor, twice. And Jermaine Taylor did a job on Hopkins twice. Anyway, very good round from Edwards there, I agree. I like Edwards, you can see he's a good fighter straight, straight from the get-go because he's using the left hand, he's using the jab. And he's pretty consistent with it as well. He's moving his head, his hands are up, he's using the left hand. I like him. Quinn just pouring out that jab, trying to keep a bit of distance between himself and the, the young when, gun. When, when you're boxing someone like Reese Edwards, who, who, is a, who is naturally smaller than Jamie and he's sharp and he's quick, the last thing I'm doing is pouring. 
you know, Jamie needs to get that left hand and he needs to get it solid. I'm not sure I'd be aiming for Reese Edwards' uh, head though, because he's probably not going to lift it. Aim, aim a little bit further down, aim at his chest, aim at his belly, beating something, be offsetting him, don't let it get in the rhythm. If he gets in the rhythm, Reese Edwards, he'll just punch on stop. Six rounder as well, so the job. he's got time to settle in more. Edwards, an urge to jab again. I heard that clearly from the corner. Yeah, so far the second round's been better than the first already. But like I say, all these all these fighters we are seeing on fight zone, a lot of them are coming off 18 in the playoff. You know, maybe, maybe even longer than that. So, you know, I think as the fight goes on, I think I think we'll see better and better from Reese in this fight. Jamie Quinn will make him work. And he's a very, very hard man to look good against. Oh, he's only 21 years of age, Edwards. Don't be predictable, Reese. Keep switching it up. Clearly here, the microphone in the corner picking that up. The instructions to Edwards. The first time, just that... A little bit of showboating from Jamie Quinn urging him in. I think Edwards is rushing a little bit. I think we've seen a couple of times this round now, we've seen it twice in the last 20 seconds. He's jabbing and he's falling over his front foot as he does it. And I think that's because he's just a little bit hasty trying to get in there. He's trying to, he's trying to, find, he's trying to find a little bit of space behind Jamie's left elbow with the right hook to the body. And he's trying to do that behind a double jab. But the second of the two jabs, he's kind of falling over it in, in haste. So. Just, just slow it down a bit, you know, and get, get that double on him first before you, before you win. Keep right, him there, right, keep right, him Jack Massey, of course, tops the bill tonight in action against Engin Karakaplan, that IBF European cruiserweight title fight. And Massey, super keen to get back on track. Be a real threat in the cruiserweight division again. Yeah, he's, he's a good fighter, uh, Jack Massey. Another react for fight. Yeah, I think he's going to react for, well, Bill and Smith maybe, but they're both getting difficult fights. Uh, he could arguably be a British champion right now, Jack. So uh, it's, it's a good fight. Interesting fight tonight. I don't really know much about uh, Karaka Raka plan. Well, like many, inactivity has been the curse for him. Had a couple of years out as well, Karaka plan. But of course, Massey wants to make a statement. Just the one blip on his career, react port. There are no blips on the career. So far, of Reese Edwards, who's going about his business very well so far. A couple of rounds in the bank. It's a much better job there. Funny that, I was only saying to my old man earlier. He was saying to me, you've got to get both feet in when you throw the job. The worst thing you can do with a job is, is overextend and come over your front knee, and you know, your chin's coming over your, your, your front knee. And he started off the round behind a good solid jab with, with his feet planted. Okay, throw on the angle, he's a bit. He's good, he's very good. You can see he's well scored, you can see the seven temperature fights, you can see he was a tough amateur. And this round now, he started to settle down a little bit, he's planting his feet a little bit more. In the first couple of rounds, I think he was a little bit hasty. As I say that there, he just kind of fall in again a little bit, but he boxed him much better there. Lo lovely slip inside the job there, listen to the more. body. Lovely work. Well, really sharp work from Edwards. Snappy work to head and body, getting in and out. Measured the distance superbly well. Yeah, he's a good operator. I'd like to see him faint a little bit more, maybe try and draw something from Jamie. I don't think you're going to draw maybe maybe a foot blown punch out of the man, but you know, draw a little bit. You know, try, try and draw that, uh, that parry out of Jamie and maybe, maybe throw the jab, faint the jab. 
draw the parry and come round with the left hook. But uh, looking well this round, he's, he's, he's relaxing more into the fight now. Down. That's it, good, good. It's about to change the pace from top to bottom. Activity from Quinn there. That's good. Good. What I like about him is he's very well balanced. He's always well balanced up there. The only time he, he does that is when he, he's when he brings himself off distance by by over overreaching the jab. But uh, he's very nicely balanced and uh, he's got very fast hands. You know, he's caught Jamie out a few times up close with his fast hands. Jamie tries to come back with something there because at the minute Reese now is starting to uh, get get into a good rhythm. So Jamie now needs to do something to disrupt that. There you go, nice, good! Well, when he does let the hands go, you hear the voices from the valleys. Good, good! And good movement there. Yeah, he's the same move every time. One, two, and he, can, he moves off to his right. Can't really work for him yet. Jamie, Jamie's very he's got good defensive now, and he, he don't force him. You know, he'll read that. He's seen that. He's seen that many times before, and he's seen it two times tonight. So, found Reese now. Maybe try something a little different. He tried that move about 30 times. Let's try something different now. And he's reached the halfway stage of this six-rounder. Mm -hmm. So far, you have every round clearly for Edwards. Yeah, I think he's good. I think he's very, very good. You can see with his amateur credentials how, how good a fighter he, he was. I've never seen him before tonight, but he's impressed me. He's getting better every round. I think he's starting to, you know, the rust obviously was showing in the first round, but he's looking good. And out of all the fighters I've seen Jamie Kinn in with the last six weeks, Reese has given him the most to think about. So uh, that's the highest compliment I can pay him. And also for a, a young man that's maybe still growing and filling out you know he's got four stoppages in his 10 victories again no defeats no draws again that's that's pretty decent knockout ratio for a young fella it is if you look at the people he's fighting you know he's got a stoppage over joe Bean, who's a very tough journeyman you know he beat uh he stopped stefan sasha the bulgarian who's not bad you know you look at johnny phillips johnny phillips what hope and price took, took him uh, the distance i believe on the, on the fight camp last year so he have been in with all the uh, all the uh, all the names, I guess you could say, the super bantam featherweight journeyman around Europe, and uh, I think he's got a, a very good future, you know. And if, and if he can develop some knockout power, he's, he'll go a long way. Well, again, he's lucky. Yeah, yeah. He has quality sparring down his neck of the woods. Likes of Cordina, Jenkins, Harris, regular work with them. Wrong. <laughs> Jamie Quinn doesn't need to spar anybody, does he? He's fighting every weekend. I remember talking to a German a couple of years ago, maybe maybe more than a couple of years ago. And I said, oh, do you do much sparring, mate? He said, I don't need to, I box every week. What do I need to spar for? Nice, nice work, good. good. And Jamie maybe in the gym twice a week, you know, keeping fit, running. That, that's probably all he'll do. He could do this in his sleep, four rounds, can he? Six rounds. Probably do 20 rounds. Shot, nice. <laughs> Shot sunk into the midriff of Quinn there from Edwards. <laughs> just trying to do his usual, starts playing the odd little game in there, trying to wind Edwards up a little bit. Yeah, we're three and a half rounds in now, Jamie, you know, he's, he's boxing for three and a half. Balls. When you're boxing someone like Reese Edwards, this is quite. This will be a pace for for, for Jamie McKinn. This, you know, this is probably the, the best operator he's been with for a little while. You see in the pace there. Yeah, now change that pace. Trying to, he's trying to steal a breather here and there where he can, and I don't blame him. It's also very, very warm in Sheffield. Incredibly warm tonight, so they will be feeling that in there. And and Jamie, you know, I, I don't think with his complexion he's going to enjoy the sun very much. So, uh, well, the canopy shields him for most of that, but it is stifling kind of a night in Sheffield. Keep your shape, keep your shape. I think now we're into that thing that I spoke about a few weeks ago, that pattern, you know. <laughs> Reese on the front foot, he's looking sharp, he's, he's looking the part, you know, with his, with his feet in and out and he's moving his head, he's throwing the jab, he's hooking off the jab now. And Jamie's just saying, all right, that's fine, I can't sell that on my gloves and uh, 
Well, we are probably two and a half rounds, you know. I think I think we're in that that, that routine, that pattern now. And Jamie's very happy with that. work at the end of the round from Edwards's point of view as Quint goes back to his corner Joe Pennington there as ever the man with him on the road but sharp work again in that fourth round from Edwards Quinn needing all his savvy you'd give to Edwards if you're in the corner there now you've just got to be patient and just enjoy the rounds is that pretty much it well you've got two rounds left you're not going to get Jamie Quinn out of there in the month of Sundays so just do everything correct you've got two rounds left do everything correct get behind your jab don't be getting it for nothing off this man don't let Jamie Quinn touch you just don't don't be throwing the jab I think when you fight fighters like Jamie Quinn you can get a little bit lazy because you sometimes know nothing's coming back, so you throw the jab and you just kind of stay in distance. You don't move your head, you just stay there because you know nothing's coming back. But eventually you will step up and you'll box one that will start it in your back. So you've got to do everything correctly now. If you do everything correctly now, it'll pay off further down the line. So I'd just like to see him throw the jab, move your head off the jab, move, 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 move one way or the other, move backwards, move sideways, do something. Don't, don't, don't get lazy now. We've got two rounds left. More rounds are better for him at this stage of his career. He's 21 years old, you know, and I think with time, go. he'll develop a bit more strength, a bit more power. He'll, he'll, he'll go really far, top. but now he's got to do everything correct tonight. And that, and that starts with a good job. Well, he's certainly landed some decent shots to the body of Quinn there, who acknowledged him with a smile. Or was that a grimace? But definitely sharp work from Edwards. Good right hand as well. I think that little that little bit of the fight there just showed when, when Edwards fights one that will come to have a go at him, we will see better from him. He counted Jamie there. He, he let four punches go and he, he was made to pay on after the fourth one. I think I think when we see someone with Edwards that, that tries to hit him back, I think Edwards' game is making one miss, making the pay. He's got good reflex, he's got fast hands, so you're not going to see the best of these tonight in with Jamie Quinn. Well, Quinn can hear the chance. For Reese, hence the play acting. He does move his head well a lot of the time, Edwards. He's, he's getting out of the way of anything that is coming back. He is. I think he's, using, he's using it. He's trying things in there. Now. When we see him with someone, you know, in a, an eight-round contest, ten-round contest, with someone that's got some real ambition coming to win, I think we'll see. I think we'll see him at his best. He has got good reflexes. He has got fast hands. He's very clever. He's experienced. Open him up, so nice. tonight, tonight for me is all about doing everything correct. Everything you will do in these eight, ten, twelve-round fights, do it now. Do it here with Jamie Quiff. You know, throw the jab. Move your head off the jab, move your feet in and out of distance, pace. move to the side. Do everything correct tonight, because if you do everything correct tonight, you've got more chance of being correct when it really, really matters, you know, with a, with, a, with a good fighter. Not that Jamie's not, Jamie's the number one fighter in the world, but you know what I'm saying, he's one with a bit more ambition. You've got to do everything correct now, so it works when, you, when you're in there with a, with a fighter like that. I've not seen from Edwards that I would like to have seen is the jab to, to the body, you know. With Jamie, he's not giving much away. I, I, the, I'm not sure what the punch count is to, to shot one Jamie's head, but put the jab in his belly. They're hitting him, they're hitting him with something. The, the, the jab to the belly is one of the most uncomfortable punches to receive in boxing. Just punch him in his belly, bring his hands down a little bit. Good body work from Edwards. 
So there's the punch that you're on about, that's that counter. Yeah, he's got very fast hands. I think when you see him, when the opposition goes up, you'll see you'll see much more from him, much, much more from him. I think he probably is a bit of a spiteful puncher as well, down at his natural weight, yeah, you know, yeah. when, it, when he's... You know, you know, he's probably not the heaviest puncher. I, I was liking it too. Out of all the people I spotted, I was Tyson Fury's the biggest puncher. And I'm not saying you're lying on all the other weights in the world and make him hit a back. Probably not hit the hardest. But when you're in there and, and, he's, using, and he's using your momentum and, and his cleverness to hit you with a shot that you don't see coming, that, that, that's power. That's, that's how you knock someone out. It doesn't matter how, how much brute strength you've got. And I think Edwards would be very clever. And I think when you've got someone with ambition and he makes him to make some pay, I think, I, think you'll, I think you'll see that he's a big puncher. Well, there's four or more heavyweights you're going to get in with soon, isn't there? Isn't there uh, who's this fellow next Thursday? What's this all about? Well, he uh, is the lead singer, Don, Don Brocco. Is he a heavyweight? Uh, I believe he may be bordering on the cruiserweight limit. I say, keep it safe. Just keep touching away. Good work from Quinn there. I love him when he just turns it on a little bit. You know, you can you can see he's, he's got it. Not that he's still got it. He's always had it. But it's it's nice to see. I would love to see him one night just turn up and just say, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna empty the. What's he gonna empty? I'm not sure what he's gonna empty, but he's gonna empty some. The tank. The tank. He's gonna empty the tank all over the ring. I'd love to see it because he's just got so much ability. You can see he was a good amateur. You know what I mean? He's, he's so good at his job. Edwards was an excellent amateur. A couple of British champions, five Welsh champions. He won a bronze at the Youth World, the Youth Commonwealth Games. Went to the World Championships. With an excellent record. 60 wins out of 70 amateur fights, which is very good going. And he's doing well in this sixth and final round, picking the shots well. I've been impressed by him. You know, you can see there's a lot there to work with. He's pretty much got everything there, really, to work with, you know? Just needs a couple more fights like this and then, then get him on his way, you know? 22, 23, next couple of years, he'll be ready to uh, be ready for 10 round title fights, maybe a Welsh title or something. Well, he's experienced to fight his own arena, and that will do him no harm. What more can very, for? very privileged people get to experience this arena, and many have in the last... I can't believe weeks. it's the last one. I know. Before Fight Zone is on the road, of course, every week bringing you action from the UK and abroad. Are you into Malta? What a conquer! Well, we'll see about that. Is Scotland abroad? Would you call Scotland abroad? No. 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 Trying to end with a flourish here, Edwards, as Quinn plays up to his crowd. But another good round, and again, Jamie Quinn has done what Jamie Quinn does for the young prospect, who will take a lot from that, you feel. Reese Edwards, a really clever performance, good snappy work throughout. Yeah, good night's work for both men. I think Reese Edwards will take a lot from that. You know, he's got six rounds in the bank. Hopefully he gets out again, gets busy soon. Uh, and Jamie, job done, 60-54. What more could either man ask for? Well, Dara Sargison is the scoring referee in the middle of the ring, but before we get to that scorecard, Dave Allen, tell us then, so this fight that you've been putting all over social media next Thursday, is this, is this what is it? Is it real? Well, I'm fighting the lead singer of uh, Don Brocco, hmm. Rob Damiani. Right, OK. It's uh, Thursday night. Uh, yeah. So where's the venue? The venue. It's a secret venue, secret location. Is it? Yeah, I can't share it right now. Okay. But uh, there's too much animosity in the fight. We don't want the, right? we don't want both sets of supporters there. Well, I think our referee, Mr. Sargison, has passed on the scorecard. Of course, still to come, we have Dan Catlin in action against Luke Blackwedge. Blackledge, I should say, that's an interesting one, of course, Blackledge, who has had a very good career. 
And that's before, of course, later on the main card, Josh Holmes, Zach Miller, Hannah Bagley and Hannah Rankin in action, Ian Martell, Jack Massey, all to come on Fight Zone. But we have the scorecard with our MC, Paul Booth. Well, boxing fans, during that six-round contest, Darren Sargentson was scoring the bout. He has it at 60 points to 54 points in favour of the winner from Penagrig, South Wales. Still undefeated as a professional boxer, Rhys Edwards. Eleven and oh, Rhys Edwards, twenty-one years young. Um, so obviously, already made pretty good strides in terms of the number of fights, fellas, as well as that very good amateur career with titles to show for his uh, feats as an amateur, looks a real prospect then. He does, yeah, and um, the Jamie Quinn experience there, yeah. he's past that, and I think, like you were saying there, it'd be interesting to see his opinion on Reese. but no, I think uh, there's a lot of things right. Again, you can see he's only young, I'm sort of banging on against him, like, but a bit different, so I can, like, he'll develop that man's strength mm. and he'll become uh, much more dangerous for that, but hits the body well, good shot selection, no, I like him, I like him a lot. What did you... Uh, what did you like about his performance there? Glenn? Very good, very good. You can tell he's well schooled. Technical ability is is excellent. You know what I like was constant head movement, and also he can go up and down. Mm. You know he, he alters his height. You know bends the knees a little bit. So you know good variety, body, head, uppercuts. You know really knows you know knows his way around the ring. You know for for so young, for just 21, um, and you you can tell by. By Jamie Quinn, yeah. yo, how serious he yeah. was, yo, because if he'd made any sort of mistake in there, yeah. he's going to get punished, and yo, he knows he knows what he's doing, and, and when you see a journeyman switched on, you know they're in with someone good. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a good point actually. He only really tried the the, the Jamie Quinn antics yes. towards the end, really, of the fight because when he, he knew, knew was yeah, the, <clears throat> yeah, he knew him. You know, the the finishing line was there, but mm. like Glenn just said, if he could have. He was, it's a big sort of mark respect the fact yeah. he wasn't doing that early on. Yeah. So that sort of also tells you a lot about Jamie Quinn's opinion on Reese. But um, no, I think now, like I say, I think these are why these shows are great. I think Reese obviously struggled with the inactivity. I was come all the way down from Wales. It's got him out. Yeah. Now I'm sure, like I say, there's no rush with him. The guy who looked to get him out, get him active again. And then um, you can then you can start looking at titles. There's no rush with him whatsoever, but there's a lot, a lot to like about Reese Edwards. Yeah, no, I think for sure obviously now that he's 11 and 0 you're thinking well the, the next step yeah. should be title fights but he's too young perhaps to be thrown too deep too know, early if you're good enough yeah. you're old okay. enough yes. so I, I, you know he's, he's got good people Gary Lockwood looking after him knows knows the game yeah. knows yeah. when to let him off the, the leash I and think I think they'll pick the right team you can look at like say a Welsh tie at law or something like that yeah. a Welsh tie, then then, like I say, once you get those eight rounders, those ten rounders, then you start looking, you know, assault for the British, your Commonwealth. Yeah. But like Glenn said, he's got a great man in his corner in Gary Lockett, who's been there himself. We're the world champions. Mm. Um, he'll know when the time to let him off the leash is. Let's hear from Reese Edwards. He's waiting to talk to Dom. Well, Reese, plenty of praise with our yeah. presenters, Glenn McCrory, Anthony Crawler, Matt Smith. Now, yeah. I, how did you feel in there? I felt good. I felt real good. Um, I was supposed to fight at 8, 12, super bantamweight um, for titles and stuff. But obviously, I got forced to well. It was either fight um, this boy, this man, or, or not fight at all. So I had to take the fight. But I felt good. I am boxed since just before lockdown. So um, obviously, I've had a long time away. But I, I felt real good to be back. Now, Jamie Quinn, he, yeah. he's a wily old fox. He knows what he's doing in yeah, there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you, did, you find, did you feel that in there? Yeah, um, definitely. Obviously, he's, he's a lot more experienced than me. He, he knows more than I forgot, probably. But, um, no, it, it was a good fight. I enjoyed it. And it's a cracking venue, cracking set up. And it's just good to be back. Good to be back with the fans and just back to a bit of normality. Fighting with the sun on your back. Oh, You're not going to get that too every hot, day. Too hot. <laughs> now, just tell us then about the ambition for yourself. You're only 21. Uh, again, you're fighting a bit heavier than normal tonight. Uh, again, yeah. what do you want to do? Obviously, you, you're talking yeah. straight away that you're, you're looking at titles and all yeah. the rest of it. So give us your ideal kind of next six months. Right, so I, the ideal thing would have been weighing 8 12 today, uh, yesterday, um, and then next fight, the title fight, the Welsh title, um, down to Super Bantamweight, and then obviously so on from me. So I am, um, obviously, I'm only young. Um, 
I don't even look 21 to be honest with you, but I, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm ready. I definitely feel like I'm ready for, for at least the Welsh title, so that's where I want. I know you've got great sparring down in South Wales, yeah. where you're from, with the likes of Cordina, Jenkins, yeah. Harris, and you've got Gary Lockett in your corner, yeah. who's been there, done it all as well. I get, that must give you massive confidence, having all those kind of people around you. Oh, 100%. Um, I've sparred plenty of rounds with JRS, Chris Jenkins, Cordina, Michael Conlan, and the praise of the, the praise of them has been so high. So just hearing people talk good about me who's been here and done it themselves makes me feel good, very good. Well, you put on a great show tonight as well. Yeah. We're going to bring in this season campaigner, Jamie yeah. Quinn, as well, as who's he's basically good fight, mate. He's missed the fight zone. Just step in. You, you've only missed one weekend of the fight zone arena, Jamie. I mean, yeah, what, yeah, what, what, what was that all about? Why weren't you here last week? My weekend, the final of a bedtime bed time off. Yeah. Your birthday weekend. Yeah. I, still, I still missed you all, though. Did you? <laughs> right. Well, you came in. A, and, and just give us a little word, because you've been in with just yeah. about everyone, and you always yeah. give everybody a hard yeah. night's work. You give them plenty yeah. to think about. But Reese, Reese I Edwards, think, like I said to him, then I think he's he's top him. Like, but what you remember, I've got near enough a, a stone on him tonight because it was a late, late opponent. But like a lot of people would have said, I'm not giving a stone away. Like him, I just said right, I'll, I'll have the fight. And uh, had it there. Say, say I felt a few of them body shots in the last round. Then I said to him after, said, what might be like to be a featherweight taking them. Uh, yeah, but we could see that. I mean, he's very snappy, isn't he? You oh, know yeah. that when he drops down a bit, that's going to be yeah. a real spite that he's got in there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'd say how it is. Yeah. I'd say if, if yeah. it wasn't hurting, I'd tell you, mate, but yeah. a, few, a few of them did. Uh, did hurt. Yeah, I got me right under the finger for <laughs> Oh, you two <laughs> Language, language, Jamie. <laughs> Apologies for anybody that's offended, Sorry. but of course, he's just been enjoying himself in the ring, so, you know. Passions are high. Anyway, listen, Jamie, you have been a, a bit of a fight zone arena star. This is all gone now. Oh, this no, is yeah. the last night, so oh, you'll have to say I'm farewell. I'm going to miss, the, miss this place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll be back on fight zone and not so long with oh, Joe, Joe in the corner yeah. as ever. Well done, lads. Well done, Reese. Well done, Jamie, as ever. Thank you, mate. All the best. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We get it all, don't we, on Fight Zone? It's great to get the insight from Jamie Quinn. Obviously, that's why we don't interview him every week, because he just slips, <laughs> as well as the odd punch, the odd naughty word, and apologies for any offence taken. Um, but, yeah, obviously, the, the blood flowing and all that. But I think it is interesting to get his insight, yeah. on, and, and also to hear that at 8 stone 12, yes, uh, super bantamweight, wow. 8 stone 12, bound to 8 stone 10. Um, 8 stone 10, I beg So I'd say that back where... I think he is ready to slap off the leash. Like you said, we mentioned the Welsh title, and I think that's the perfect fight for him mm. next, if it can be made. And not just that, the the sparring that he's getting, and by all sounds of it, he's given a great you know account of himself. The lads he's sparring, he's um, like Glenn said, you're good enough, you're young enough, young enough, good enough, whichever way around it is. Yeah. I um, I, I look forward to seeing him being let off the leash, and like I say, it'll be very soon. Well, it'll be it'll be a handful of. Superman's oh, mate, certainly that, will, it? certainly will. I mean, also his attitude, you know, taking the fight, stone over, he yeah. wants to get in there. Yeah. That's potentially potentially a dangerous fight for somebody that's yeah. very knowledgeable in the ring, but he's not bothered, you know, he wants to move forward, he wants to fight, and that's what's, that's what's great. And what's great also to see is, is the characters, you know, when you see them interviewed and see the, the, the feeling between the two of them. Yeah. You know, they've just had six rounds yeah. <laughs> punching lumps out of each yeah, other. As we and heard. then you know <laughs> then they they you know giving each other hugs and yeah. you know great great spirit. And I love to see that yeah. that side of the game that we don't we don't always see. No. But talking about danger fights, Dan Catlin up next, who got the knockout last time. But it's a step up against Blackledge, isn't it, here tonight? Or it could be? It could be. It depends if Blackledge, you know, has has, has been working hard, has been training. If he comes with a bit of intensity and he comes to fight, it could be very interesting. Yeah. This is Catlin last time out. He was he was impressive, relentless. He was. Got power. He was. Um, every hand did. And listen, like I said, it, it all depends which Luke Blackledge turns up. If this yeah. is Luke who's going to have a real goal, you've got to remember, a former Commonwealth champion. Do I think everyone would say his best days are behind him? But... If it can turn back the clock just slightly, mm. it's going to be um, a tough night for Dan. But um, again, very exciting last time out. I was saying I think he's going to look to start fast again tonight against Luke Blackledge. But you would think Catelyn would just have to just just see what kind of Blackledge he's up against in the, maybe Mo the first couple of rounds. Most definitely, most definitely. I think he, you know, he needs to have, he, he was full on last time, wasn't he? Just yeah. non-stop. I think he might have to be a, a little more thoughtful when he starts in the, in the first round. Just have a little look. 
just get your jab working, get your rhythm going, and, and work your way into the fight. Yeah, well, you like to watch the cruiserweights, don't you, for obvious reasons? <laughs> I do, I do. You know, I find the, the cruiserweights, obviously, the big fellas, but they've still got that, they've still got that speed. Yeah. Do you know what I think? It's nice a, it's, mix. It's a great division. You don't like the cruiserweights too much, do you? I don't like being punched off no. them. But no, I do. No, Listen, does? great division. I <laughs> think well. um, I always, the only thing I criticise is the, the weight difference between the um, light heavyweights yeah. and the cruiserweights. But, you know, that's that thing. But, yeah, jump, there's some, um, yeah, huge jump. But, um, no, there's some, I think, domestic as well. Mm. It's um, a great scene. So Yeah, we're going to see Ian Martel later tonight, yeah. aren't we? And he's one of the yeah. names to get in amongst Jack that mix. Messi. And yeah. Jack Massey. Yeah, exactly. Exactly going for that IBF European title. So lots and lots to look forward to, including now, Catlin up against Blackledge, uh, and the MC is ready to bring them out once again. So over to Paul Booth. Live from ringside in the sunshine here in Sheffield, this is Friday Night Boxing. Now, a cruiserweight contest. Dennis Hobson's Fight Academy bring you a scheduled four-round contest. Firstly, to make his ring walk from Darwin is Luke. Blackledge! And now to make his ring walk to the blue corner, bringing with him a perfect professional fight record from Fleetwood. It's dangerous, Dan Catlin. Two viewers joining us right around the world via the Fight Zone TV platform and boxing fans ringside here in the sunshine in Sheffield. Dennis Hobson's Fight Academy now bring you a scheduled four round contest in the cruiserweight division. Timekeeper on the bell is Chris Hancock of Doncaster. And the third man in the ring is our scoring referee in charge of this bout, introducing Andy Brook of Leeds. Boxing out of the red corner, he's wearing the white shorts trimmed with red. Scaling officially for the bout at 13 stone, 13 pounds, 4 ounces. 26 career victories, including 9 finishing inside the scheduled distance. He stands in the ring this evening as a former WBC International Silver Super Middleweight champion and a former Commonwealth super middleweight champion. Boxing out of Darwin, Lancashire. Introducing Robbo, Luke Blackledge. And across the ring in the blue corner stands his undefeated opponent. Tonight he's wearing the black shorts trimmed with white and gold. He scaled 12 stone, 13 pounds, 6 ounces. Six visits to the ring as a professional boxer. Six victories on his record, with three going inside the scheduled distance. He boxes out of Fleetwood on the Fylde Coast, introducing the undefeated, dangerous Dan Catlin. 
Referee Andy Brook will now give his final instructions. Seconds out, round one. So dangerous Dan Catlin, as he's known. We've watched him in action, very impressive against Kieran Thomas. Last time out here at the Fight Zone Arena, the end of May. So a fairly quick turnaround for him again to be back in action. And Luke Blackledge, of course, has been around the block a time or two. The Commonwealth champion. Super middleweight division coming to this contest tonight. Good bit heavier than that. He's the bigger man in there tonight. He's got a bit of a weight advantage over the 12 stone 13 pounds Dan Catlin. Do you know the last time I saw Luke Blackledge? Have a guess where it were? Sainsbury's. Nope. It was in the hotel, right? Of the morning, he was watching uh, Andrew Ruiz against Josie Parker for the world heavyweight title, and he was getting ready to fight Callum Smith. This is a big yep. step up in, uh, in opposition for Dan Catlin. Well, it's huge. I mean, Black Ledge is a very, very seasoned operator, as, as you say. He's had titles. He's been in with some excellent operators, the likes of Callum Smith. He's beaten good men. The likes of Lee Markham springs to mind. Good operators in the divisions domestically. And Catlin... He was a good fighter, Luke Lockley. Very good fighter. He was very, very good fighter. It's... Uh, Really interesting fight, this. What has Luke got left? You know, looking at his recent contest, you'd have to, you'd have to argue maybe not so much, but uh, but he, even then, looking at you know, he's bringing the likes of Lewis Edmondson and and Dennis Radovan, Oli Patterson, Chad Sugden. So, you know, he, he, even then, you know, they're, they're much higher up the, the the rankings than the Dan Catlin. So it's a, it's an interesting fight. And again, the pandemic has put so much on hold for so many people, but he did get out against. Lewis Edmondson in April of this year. But what is it now for Blackledge? Because the titles, you might say, are they gone? Is it life on the road now? Is it about just getting what well, maybe he deserves out of boxing? You know, a few quid out a bit on the road and to maybe help the prospects like Dan Catlin learn. But, well, we'll see. Maybe there is still the fire burning there. He's only 30. Yeah, so far it doesn't it doesn't look great for him. To be honest, Catlin's running the opening round. He's not really not letting his shots fly like like he would back back five or six years ago. But uh, Catlin's looking all right. Yeah, one night in the 24 amateur fights. Uh, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. But the Luke Blackledge of old, this, this would be a very very interesting fight. It'd be interesting if Luke warms into the fight. You know, obviously a former 10 and 12 round fighter. So. You know, the, the, sh the short duration of the fight obviously definitely plays into Catlin's favour, but uh, in intriguing first round. Well, has he been patient? He was obviously a man in a hurry, I think, against Thomas last time. He did get the stoppage in that fight eventually, but as I think he realises, even though it is only a full rounder. He showed a bit of patience in there. He's probably just seeing, trying to work out what Blackledge has, as, as we've been trying to work out, I suppose. Yeah, I think with Catlin, I think, obviously, he will look at Luke Blackledge, and, and Dan Catlin, a young man, 22 years of age, he's probably seen Luke Blackledge four or five years ago fighting the Callum Smith. So he's going to be going in there, he's going to be thinking, he's watched man on the TV, he was, he was a very good fighter, you know, he was a title holder, so... It's probably a weird one for him, he's probably looking across and thinking, can I beat this man, even though he probably have full confidence, he'll probably be questioning himself, so... I want to see more out of Blackledge in the second round. I want to see much more out of him. You know, in a four-round fight there for, for, for Luke, the, the pace was it. slow. You know, use your experience, make it uncomfortable for Dan in there. I want to see much more from him because he's one round down. Second he down. needs to win the last round three to two. win the fight. Feints there from Catlin, but 
has really got the jab going. I think he's still probably a bit tentative because he's given a bit of weight away to Blackledge. Callan is just doing enough. You know, he's, he's, he's using a decent enough jab, he's throwing the feints, as you say, he looks nice and relaxed in there. For me, Catlin is winning the fight, doing what he's doing. It's up to Blacklist now to, to make to make this uncomfortable for uh, for Catlin. You know, it's, it's up to Blacklist to do more because, as it is right now, Cat Catlin's winning the fight and, and Blacklist on the back foot there. You know, I don't, I don't really see him. I don't really see this fight changing from the pattern we're, we're seeing currently. To be honest, Blacklist doesn't look able to to pull the trigger anymore. Well, good work from Catlin. Caught a few over from Fleetwood. <laughs> just lets his hands go there, Black Ledge, which has maybe just spurred Catlin into action. That's a big right hand, they easily the best shot of the fight so far from Catlin. Yeah, he certainly set it uh, Black Ledge up there. Blackledge just seems to, to be working the body a lot and uh, trying to finish with the left hook upstairs, but he did get caught with a big right hand from Catlin there. Definitely stirs his legs a little. Blackledge for me on the on the back foot here. You know, there's only going to be one winner. Uh, the, the way the fight's panning out right now. Well, there's plenty of blood on the face of Blackledge as well. That cut doesn't look too clever. Yeah, the right the right eye does seem to be bad cut from from our vantage point, we are struggling to see with the sun in our eyes, but th there does seem to be a lot of blood there. And Catlin now is, is starting to, uh, to, to to land clean and, and pretty often. Blackledge that goes back to the corner that's going to get that cut worked on from Catlin's point of view. Henry Wharton in the corner there again, busy night for him. Now where did the damage to the eye come from? Was that the left hand or was it... There's the big right hand obviously that Catlin landed, but the cut was already there by that point. Yeah, another, another Catlin round. You know, the cut won't do Black as any favours. He actually took the right hand very well. A clean shot, he took it very well, but we need to see a lot Second more out of him this round. Round you know, three. Because he's, uh, he hasn't looked the fighter he once was. He was a very good fighter back in the day, but the first two rounds have been have been pretty disappointing for him, to be honest. Even though Catlin has been has been has been uh, has been decent. From Catlin goes a miss. With Blackley's throwing it, Blackley just seems to be getting up close and just swinging four or five to the body. Catlin just seems to be stepping back and trying to trying to throw over the, the low held hands of, uh, of, of Blackley, which is not a, which is not a bad tactic. Catlin is catching Blackley with, with short left hooks inside as well because Blackley is overreaching when he when he throws his own right hand. Huh? <laughs> 
Good work again from Catlin. Just really controlling centre of the ring now. Catlin's work is good, but it's sporadic. You know, I'd like, I'd like to see him get behind the jab in between. In between the good work he does, just get, just get behind the good left hand. And again, up and down, head, body, stick it in his chest. Anywhere really. Black, Black has got the experience where he does try and slip the shot. So put, put the jab in his chest, and Black maybe, maybe uh, he might slip or does and duck into it. Sinks one into the body there, Catlin. Good shot. Black was right on there. I don't know if you know it's that, but it was very slow and telegraphed. And you know, I'm watching a fighter here, a, a good fella who was a good fighter back in the day, and I watch you now, and it kind of saddens me to see to see the the fight we're seeing in front of us. To be honest, Catlin's doing a good job, and he's, but it, but he's making look, 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 look while he doesn't look ordinary due to. Scatlin performing well, the, the shots are so slow and telegraphed and forced. And I don't know, I'd like to see Catlin put his foot down in the last round and maybe try and force a stoppage would be a good result, at least on paper. And another round you would certainly give to Catlin, Dave Allen, so going into the fourth. 3 0 Catlin, yeah. I, I think. I think while Blackles needs the stoppage to win the fight, I think I think it's on Catlin now to really force the pressure and, and maybe get Blackles out of there. You know, Blackley does look uncomfortable when he's under pressure. Catlin's already shown he's got the power to to, to bother uh, Blackles, and he landed a lovely left hook to the body in the, in the middle of the round there. So I would like to see more from Catlin. You know, don't don't go through the motions. Just get get your man out of there because this will be a good result with the with the stoppage over Luke Blackles. So let's. Let's up the pace, get 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 behind the solid jab and, and put your shots together. When he puts his shots together, he, he looks good. Well, Blackledge, a late replacement, so not the opponent that Catlin was preparing for, but such is life at the minute with the pandemic, it's causing all sorts of problems for fighters. I mean, it's it's a miracle we're, we're getting such brilliant cards on here at the Fight Zone Arena on a regular basis. Yeah, it's incredible. I think the fact that we've had Seconds six, up, seven shows in the last six, seven weeks has been unbelievable. You know, it's not really... No one, else, no one else has been doing this in, in recent times, so it, it's been fantastic. Well, the and fourth and final round. Blue Blackledge on paper is a much better opponent than the original opponent as well. You know, for Catlin, this, you know, Catlin, I say force the stoppage, I would like to see him go through the gears now and up the pace and try and get the stoppage, but whenever Blue Blackledge is in a professional fight, it, it's a good result. I don't like the way he steps out of distance with his left hand so low. You know, I'm not saying his chin's in the air, but he does leave his chin hanging out a little bit and he comes back with his left hand by his side. Maybe someone with a bit more ambition, a little bit more speed than following him back with the right hand over the top of that. So I think, again, as we said earlier in the earlier fights, even though you are in with a man that maybe not maybe not good enough to capitalise on your mistakes you're making tonight, you've got to really work on them things because if you're in with a better man than Luke Blacklist tonight with a little bit more um, ambition and snap, Going back in straight lines if you left hand that low with your chin dangling about, you'd be in big trouble. So, should really be working on that. I did enjoy some success in that last flurry. Get the crowd going there. Dan Catlin. And again, it's just opening up a little bit. Nice foot from Blackley's there. Nice bit of success for him at last into the fourth round. <laughs> turning southpaw now. I'm not a big fan of fighters turning stance, switching stance in fights. You know, unless you're Nazi Mohammed or unless you're Terence Crawford. You spent a fair bit of time in the Ingle gym, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, and that's why I don't turn southpaw. So I'm not going to do it in the gym, so I'm not going to do it in the ring. If you're not a natural southpaw and you, and you, and you know, you're not, you're not a Terence Crawford or it's one of that ilk. Don't do it, because you ain't going to do it when you boxed at the high level, so don't, don't try and do it tonight, do you know what I mean? And a good straight one-two from Catlin. Again, he 
comes into this, his seventh fight of his career, Dan Catlin with a, a 50% KO ratio, but the bigger man, Luke Blackledge, who takes another good left hand there, he was just a bit stunned there, the leg stiffened from Blackledge. Yeah, Catlin, yeah, he's, he's got long levers, and he can, he can punch a little bit, he's not bad at all, he's not bad, you know, Luke's tall. Well, I think there's a big experience. size difference tonight, isn't there? There's a weight difference, there's probably... Luke, Luke Blackledge's punch, his punch distance has, has gone, Dom, to be honest, you know. Well, like you said, the size discrepancy probably has helped him get through the fight. Well, yeah, Dan Catlin, four rounds to nil, good performance, good win. Great win on paper for him, and now he moves on to bigger and better. Yeah, just 22 years of age, the man from Fleetwood. And is that 7-0? and oh. Of course, he's been around a while, turned pro at 19, but, of course, not been as busy as he would have liked. Nobody has. But that could be, as you say, a good win in the column for Dan Catlin. Andy Brook is the man who is just currently scribbling his scorecard down. Some decent action in that fourth and final round. Yeah, I thought I thought Catlin boxed well, he boxed all right. It's hard to box someone against like Luke Blackers when without the ambition. You know, again, Catlin again another fighter, I think fights one that will come to cause him all kinds of problems. He's probably boxed better. You know, his reflex again are good, he, he can punch a little bit, he's quick, he, he looks strong enough, so. So yeah, he's not bad at all. You know, I just think the only slight really is he's on he's on Blackledge there. I didn't think didn't think he'd, you know had much much hunger for the game there. Well, of course, so much to come on Fight Zone. Jack Massey, top of the bill. Ian Martell, Hannah Bagley, Hannah Rankin, Zach Miller, Josh Holmes, all to come. But now we have the scorecard from this contest: Catlin against Blackledge, and the result is with our MC, Paul Booth. After four rounds of. Cruiserweight boxing, we ask our scoring referee Andy Brook to decide the bout. He sees it at 39 points to 37 points in favour of our winner from Fleetwood. Still undefeated, dangerous Dan Catlin. Good workout, you would think that for dangerous Dan Catlin, who I'm, I'm sure perhaps long term won't be a, a cruiserweight. It certainly doesn't look from the frame, Glenn, that, that he could, I'm sure it doesn't even perhaps need to boil down, but maybe super middle somewhere around there. A, a light heavyweight probably, because yeah. still from where he was, he's still got half a stone to, to, get, to get rid of, which I'm sure he can do that quite easily. But he's only 22 yeah. years of age, so he's not, you know, He's going to get bigger, true. You know, as, as time goes on. So I think a yeah, good addition to the to the like, heavyweight ranks. And yeah. um, do you know, I think he, he, he's still a work in progress. He still makes mistakes. The left hand's far too low when he comes in with with a better class of fighter. But uh, you know, I mean, these are the sort of fights that will get him experience, and these yeah. are the sorts of fights that will make him progress. Yeah, and obviously the cut affected perhaps Luke Blackledge, who's in fairness perhaps not the fighter he was in his heyday. Yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, he still asked a few questions, yeah. which is good, so a very uh, beneficial fight for Dan. I think, like you said, he's going to, he'll eventually grow into a lightweight, won't we? Yeah. I think what you say, he was under 13 stone yesterday, but he, listen, he probably got in the ring weighing the same yeah. tonight. Um, might, like you say, he might talk super middle as well. But, um, let's say, great that he's active. Mm. Great that he's active. Sells a few tickets as well, that always helps. Yeah. Um, and like you say, you can steadily move him. Yeah. Rangy, got a nice combination of punches he has you know as i say there's still there's still plenty of work to be done on him he's a bit he's a bit open gets caught with with, right. with shots obviously as the as the opponents get better you'll find it you'll find it harder i like to you know he drops that left hand and he's got his chin in the air a little bit so um yeah a lot to work on but you know this is this is what these fights are for you know just to build up experience and just just to keep trying to improve and trying to improve and he's doing that I think, like, say, being active will do down the world of good. There he is, yeah, and you'll keep seeing him through. That was a lovely shot yeah. there, the overhand right there. Splash it down across um, Luke. But I just, um, like I said, there's, um, I've said it a few times tonight. I've seen, like I said, about everyone, there is, there is a lot to like about him. But, like you say, if he tied it up, that'll come with experience, being active. And um, we see where this journey goes, like, say, at super middleweight or light heavyweight. Yeah, well, 
he's talked of in the, in the records, obviously since Tenny Pro, as a, as a middleweight at times. Yeah. So he has boiled down to a couple of a couple of weight divisions below. Uh, and so. The great thing about Fight Zone is the fighters are going to get the opportunities yeah. yes. because it is you know week in week out, yeah. and you know all around the country it's going to be. So they're going to get the the, the chance will come and that's you know that's what's great about this about this platform yeah and others in and around those weight categories will be seeing Catelyn saying well, i wouldn't mind a piece of him yeah equally yeah. obviously his manager will be saying well of course. where do we look next but i think no i think with him you know similar fights to that learning fights don't have to rush him young maybe another four round or two then look six round just take your yeah. time take your time with him um lot to learn and um like i say a good team around him and when the time's right be ready to go. And the yeah. thing to remember is, you know, it, it, it's sometimes not the best to be young and get there too quick, yeah. especially at the, the heavier weights, because he's gonna he's gonna get his man strength and, and mature around about 29, 30, right. 31. So there's a lot of time. So mm. it's really just about just getting the experience. Don't don't try and rush it too much. Just take your time and get the work in. Time we heard from the winning boxer Dan Catlin waiting to talk to Don McGuinness. Well done, Dan. That's a good win on the record now. Luke Blackledge, he's, you know, he's no mug. He's a great operator yeah. as well. So, uh, again, talk us through how you saw it in there. Yeah, so I felt in control, really. I mean, I know Luke. He's a great lad. We've sparred hundreds of rounds. And I knew if I came today and thought, oh, I'll try and take him out there in four rounds, it'll be a war. You know, and I, we've got a date in mind in about six weeks. So, get behind the jab. It's something that I've not showed too much of in my career so far. So, I thought I could use a bit of the jab, use that boxing, and get through the rounds and win the rounds. Get some good rounds in the belt with Luke, so yeah. He's a much bigger man in there tonight, a yeah. heavier man. So, yeah, so were you mindful of that as well? Yeah, so obviously you've got to be careful, you know. He's got, I mean, my natural weight's 11 stone 6 for a fight. I mean, I cut, cut a little bit for it, but so I can operate a middleweight. So, you know, going in there, he's a cruiserweight, you know, and he, you know, he's a big fella. I think he's about 14 stone in there tonight. And, you know, I, I was well hydrated when I weighed in, so to speak, anyway. So, yeah. Well, what's the weight then that you're really going to campaign at? Because, I mean, clearly you're not, you're not going anywhere near a cruiserweight or light like heavy even if you're talking about doing middleweight, yeah. but is super middleweight really your future? Um, maybe. I'm only 22, so maybe um, in the future. But I can make middleweight now with these. Um, if I had a fight, you know, in, in the next few months and he said, right, you need to be 11 stone 6 for this fight, I'll make that easily. Uh, and I think I'll be a big lad and a strong lad at the weight as well. That's going to give you a lot of options going yeah. forward, isn't it? Because yeah. you're only 22. That's it, yeah. 22, so obviously, you know, I might grow a little bit, might fill in super middleweight, but we'll see what happens. That's just your seventh fight. Seventh fight. You've had your second fight at the Fight Zone Arena, which yeah. is no more now, so you've got no. to wave farewell to this place. Yeah, yeah. But it's been, it's been a good ground for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, I got, my, got a stoppage win last time out and then a good four rounds with Luke, so... Yeah, it's been a good experience for me. I've enjoyed it down here. And you mentioned six weeks, there might be something in the offing. Yeah, so, so can you give us have a to wait sneak preview? Wait to Kev's announcement. You know, I think he's going to put on a few shows. I uh, can't give you any dates or venues yet, but he's got he's got some all set. So I think next week after this, he's going to announce them. So we'll be back out again in about six weeks. And how are you enjoying the Fight Zone platform? I'm enjoying it, mate. You know, it gives people like me the opportunity to, to showcase my skills on a wider level. Like I would have built on the small hall shows. So for me to be able to fight on this platform, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, really. It's great what the guys are doing, so. And you're putting Fleetwood back on the map because we've got Fleetwood Steve Gray map. and Jane Couch. We have, yeah, yeah, and so then, now, now it's, yeah, now it's, now it's your time. Boxer, I think, well, in a while anyway. So yeah, yeah, so put Fleetwood on the map. Well, well done tonight. Nice one, mate, thank you. I am Jack Massey. <laughs> back in business. Putting the Cruiserweight division on notice. <laughs> Watch me on Fight Zone this Friday. Fightzone.uk Subscribe now. Well, he is a cruiserweight and we'll see him later. In fact, there's the full card for the rest of the evening. It continues to be a who's who of Fight Zone talent on the show tonight with Zach Miller, Josh Holmes and Ian Martell all looking to follow up on an impressive victory here in Sheffield. Josh steps up to six rounds, although he scored a stoppage inside two last time we saw him. Zach Miller takes on the entertaining name Ali, who therefore must give a fair chunk of weight away in the process. Zach, he saw off Chris Pilkington last time. Then it's that exhibition contest for the two Hannas, a tune-up for Rankin, who fights with us at the end of the month for real, and a taste of the big time for Hannah Bagley, who we spoke to last week, who is definitely looking forward to showing what she's got in an exhibition bout here this evening. Ian Martell, uh, definitely impressed with his aggressive style and a sickening blow to the body to stop 
Elvis Dube. I think that was a cruiserweight. He's at heavyweight tonight, uh, as you can see, against Eric Nazarian, who has fairly heavy hands himself. Fireworks, hopefully, in that one. And then Jack Massey, as discussed, makes his much anticipated return to the ring here on Fight Zone. Engin Karakaplan stands between Jack and the IBF European honors. So lots to look forward to from 7.30. Obviously, Ant and Glenn will be alongside me. We'll have Dom uh, and Dave, as well as Glenn, on commentary. Remember, Fight Zone, just 4 99 a month. That's how you sort yourself out from beyond 7.30. Hope you've enjoyed the free taster, but it's just 4 99 a month for boxing every Friday on Fight Zone. So do get yourself sorted out, and we'll see you on Fight Zone at 7.30. See you in a bit.